Welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at Persona 5 Strikers for the Nintendo Switch. Now, while it might not be the Persona a lot of you out there wanted, can this warrior style experience deliver one that is worth facing? But also, does it capture the spirit of the series? Well, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and let's get started. Story and first up, no spoilers. At the request of Atlas, we are keeping everything here early game or the first boss. So, a lot of the footage will look similar. Do not worry, that is not the case. It's maybe the opening five to six hours or so of gameplay. The story here, though, it finds the Phantom Thieves reunited. Joker has returned home, and after a quick catch up with everyone, it's decided a road trip is in order. Things naturally take a turn for the worse, though, and of course, it's time to overcome corruption in the metaverse and the jails as they are known here. The story, it really surprised me. I didn't expect much from this and it absolutely delivered an experience worthy of the name. There's a whole lot of talking, a whole lot of downtime, like think of visiting the classic Cafe Leblanc. And I'd say this is more Persona than Warriors, which is something that I did not expect. I recently played Persona 5 Royale as well, and just know this one's set around the original Persona 5, not Royale, so don't expect some information to carry over. Now, if you've never played Persona 5, you won't get quite as much from this one, but you will pick up things pretty quickly as it reintroduces this world. So gameplay on this is what surprised me the most. I came here with the expectation of just a traditional Warriors experience and a Persona paint job slapped on, you know, overwhelming enemy count, button mashing, the usual formula. And in a way, yes, that's exactly what we get. That said though, it's the setup that's so unique rather than all out non-stop action. Instead, we get a healthy balance of what I would consider three elements. That's plot, jail exploration, and then of course, the action. That's because in battle here, you will run around a jail. The same thing as palaces in the original games, and you'll have some platforming abilities to it, like assist you. Progression though involves moving towards an explanation point on your map that pushes the story forward. Now, instead of a constant rush of enemies though, this is handled more like an RPG, meaning you will see enemies wandering around the map. You will need to actually connect with them though to kick a fight off. You touch one, enemies spawn, and the game essentially then turns into arena-based warriors, not a bad thing. You can also though get the jump on them for an advantage by sneaking up behind them with the tap of the X button, or they can also get the jump on you too. This immediately led for me to a little less burnout on the formula. You know, of course, you're still leveling up, all that good stuff, it's extremely important. But it's nice to have the choice that, you know, when you're prepared to, you can just kind of sprint, jump and hop your way through this environment very quickly. Expect then your favourite enemies to return as well as a ton of boss moments. Now this wouldn't be a Persona game of course without the Personas, and these are attached to the tap of the R trigger to implement what is kind of a widespread blow. You'll see a big old circle come up on your screen and that will inflict serious damage to anyone who falls inside it. These are then attached to an SP meter in game, but I found a nice tactic was to switch freely between your team members one by one and kicking this into action for some seriously intense moments. The combat is surprisingly deep, or at least deep by a warrior standard. So when you throw in the inventory management, something you're gonna need to get good at if you wanna beat this one, managing and healing the team's health, stealth attacks, specials when enemies are stunned, and even a team-based finishing blow, which is just absolutely epic. And yeah, they've delivered a warrior's experience that just didn't wear thin on me. This is just the beginning then for the battles as well. Like Persona, you can jump in and out of these jails as you please once a checkpoint is reached. Say you need more items or simply a regen. Maybe you wanna visit the Velvet Room and upgrade or change your Persona. Maybe you just wanna chat to your friends, something I did frequently. And then sometimes maybe you'll just wanna, you know, sit back and enjoy the world. It's not as deep as Persona 5, but it does a hell of a job mimicking what I experienced. I just wish it kind of carried over some of the mini games from the original game. I think that would have been a very cool touch. This one though, like it caught my attention due to the sheer amount of downtime between these jails. The smartest move they made 
was just recognizing the importance of story, recognizing the strength behind this cast of characters, and then just absolutely embracing it. The amount of talking as well might not be for everyone, honestly. The opening couple of hours of gameplay was more exploration, investigation, and talking than anything else, and I was so happy about that. I'm just not sure I would recommend that to someone that wants the traditional hack and slash ways of the Warrior series because, you know, that's what it's most known for. But this game will absolutely make you work for those moments initially from visiting fan favorite locations to obviously all new ones on the road trip. I don't want to go into these moments too much, but of course you will have a base of operations and you will always have reasons to talk and listen to these relationships. It was just good to be back. Problems and definitely a few issues, the camera, it's warriors and in large scale battles, especially in these kind of more arena focused style. I would be lying if I didn't say I was simply mashing buttons and hoping for the best because either there was so much going on on screen I simply couldn't quite get the right like viewpoint or the camera was kind of just like, you know, not listening to me. The frame rate then it does get a little rocky at points as well, but nothing that I would put near to being awful. It for sure drops, so put it that way. And then the grind, the further I got, the more mistakes I made. I was moving through areas too quickly, like some ninja. And I had to remind myself, it is still a Warriors game. You gotta fight, and you gotta fight a lot. There's also a fair few random spikes in difficulty that you will need to overcome. And they were the only moments where I did, I will say, get a little burnt out on the formula. One issue that is my own as well, my own fault. I lost seven hours of progress, so be warned here, there's no autosave really wish they'd put something in place, so don't be an idiot like me. Again though, not the game's fault, my fault, and it was a bloody painful lesson to learn. So overall gameplay, I'm really impressed. The Warriors elements, it was always going to be entertaining to some extent, but when I think Warriors, I so often think relatively, you know, brainless entertainment. That wasn't the case here, a ton of RPG elements where I had to think strategy, multiple team members to manage to players with multiple fighting styles, I had to learn inventory to manage, personas to upgrade and adapt, and then a story that I can easily say Persona 5 fans, you will absolutely love it. So visually it's a great looking game and when you factor in just the sheer size of these locations and the road trip element that takes you just all over the place, I'm going to put it out there now and say it's one of the best looking games on the Nintendo Switch I've seen in a long time. From the battles where signature moves are just a plenty, stylish camera cuts, transitions, tons of enemies on screen, and then some of the special moves, they're as epic as you would expect, especially the personas. Well, the jails can sometimes take hours and they do get a tiny bit repetitive towards the end. It always had a trick up its sleeve to pull me back in, mainly down to the incredibly creative enemy design that the series is known for. Now sure, like it's a Warriors game, so repetitive enemies is kind of a byproduct of that formula. And some of the animations for specials by the end game, it can get a little tiresome watching them repeat for the thousandth time. But outside of that, it's a great looking game that captures the source material. And I think that's the most we could have ever asked for. So finally, audio, and I'm going to keep this quick. I imagine one thing about this video is fans of the Persona series are probably watching this, and you know how amazing a Persona soundtrack is. Returning themes and new ones grace our ears, and it's about as good as it gets, blending genres, instrumentation, and of course, vocals perfectly. It's catchy as hell, it's repetitive, but repetitive is fine by me when it is this good. This needs to be released physically as soon as possible. I will buy it in a second. Then we get, of course, a whole lot of weapons, attacks, movement, all those decent sound effects, you know, and they absolutely work. But most importantly, voice acting. It's the original cast returning. I was a little concerned about this, actually, because they did all the recording remotely due to the quarantine. I was a little worried that would, you know, impact the quality, but not at all. They've pulled it off, and it's all another win for Strikers. So the final verdict, and I think it's clear, I'm a big fan of Persona 5. That said, it wasn't a guarantee I would like this. In fact, if anything, I think that made me a little bit more suspect about the concept. But they did it, they delivered, they've created by far the deepest Warriors experience I've ever played personally, while also staying true to the RPG roots. It's a lot simpler, of course, but I think the biggest compliment I can give this one is, it felt like a Persona game first, a Warriors game second. Today, I'm giving Persona 5 Strikers a great 
8 out of 10. I'm really impressed. I was leaning towards a 9, honestly, but it's just pulled down by those difficulty spikes, the occasional frame rate drop, the general grind at points, and then some of those camera issues. But like that said, if you are a fan of the series, you absolutely should play this one. It's got a whole lot more to it than you may expect. And yeah, it's just good to be back. Will you be adding this one to your collection though, or is this one just simply not for you? With that then, a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. If you do want to check that out for yourself, I have linked it in the video description down below. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.